All right, so it is 9.32 and we will get started with today morning session. So, so far you must have had sessions on uh, networking topics and yesterday you must have seen a video of uh, how to do think pair share. So, what we will do is I also have a video of how to execute flip classrooms. Okay. So, let us say you are using somebody else's video what to do in the classroom and uh, so on. So, again this one even though I am here physically present we will be playing the video. The reason for doing that is that we are trying to see whether you can yourself take the video and conduct local uh, such workshops on these active learning techniques. So, what we will do is even though I am present, so we will play the video and wherever the video is supposed to be paused somebody will pause it and at that time you are required to carry out the activities that are mentioned in the in that particular slide. So, it will say that okay, participants do something so then you should uh, diligently carry out that activity it will say coordinators do something else and so if you do that activity we want to see whether it is possible to for somebody other than me to just play the video pause it at the appropriate points and still deliver the same thing effectively. So, that you can later on use that video for your own workshops. So, what we will do now is to start off with playing the video and towards the end we will again come back for a live uh, discussion session. Welcome back to this session on uh, active learning. So, before we progress let me talk about what we have done so far. So, in the morning we had one session where you were introduced to the concept of active learning why it is required and so on and then we have gone in depth into two such techniques. One was think pair share and the other was peer instruction. In this session what we will talk about is the flipped classroom model and the reason why it is relevant to you is because you may be the local instructor for the blended uh, MOOC version of CS1 where you may be using videos created by somebody else for your students. So, the key question is what do we do in the classroom at that time. Okay. So, before we start let me pose one scenario, consider a scenario, there are two teachers A and B for a given topic. So, teacher A gives a lecture on the topic in class followed by problem solving exercises for students to practice at home and teacher B asks students to watch a video of the lecture at home before coming to the class and does the problem solving activities in the class. Okay, so, what I am going to do now is to create a, a a view poll and then instead of doing it through clickers this time I am doing it through a view. So, the question now is according to you which of the teachers is better. Okay. So, let me put back the the slide. So, teacher A is giving lectures on the topic followed by problem solving exercises for students to practice. Teacher B asks students to watch the video of the lecture at home before coming to class okay. and this is the poll that we have to do according to you which teacher strategy is better A, B or both are equally good. So, this one is not being sent through the clickers. So, what we can simply do is coordinators can convey your RC's majority vote as your response for the A view poll. Okay, so, this is encouraging in the sense that more than 50 percent of the centers are already saying that teacher B is better and the other 50 percent are equally split between saying teacher A is better or both are equally good. Okay. So, what we will do is a quick short activity. Okay. So, what we want is a debate between two groups. So, in your center you <coughs> some of you will be A and some of you will be B and those of you who are A should list points for why teachers A strategy is better than teacher B and those of you who are B should list points for why teachers B strategy is better than teacher A. 
So you can send two points in favor of each of the views. So it's not necessary that one teacher is clearly always better than the other. So those of you who are A should send points in favor of A and those of you who are B should send points in favor of B. Okay, so I'm get, starting to get responses saying in A there is direct interaction with student, student should get the idea of topic first and can have doubt, say A is more interactive, student will get a concept at a quick time, A can have live commanding on the students, B people are saying students can grasp the ideas fast, interaction with students for teacher B is better. Teacher A is traditional method, teacher B is new method, basic ideas are already talked about for teacher B, interaction between teacher and students will be there, students can attempt higher level problems, okay, so that is good. So it is encouraging to see that the morning sessions, as a result of the morning sessions, many of you have got the idea of what is active learning and why it is useful. Most of the points that are coming on the chat are valid points. So let me summarize. So I think you will find that your points are also included here. So when teacher A is doing lecture in class plus exercises at home, in the teacher's perspective, the teacher can adapt the lecture dynamically to the student's response. So this we feel is the biggest advantage of teacher A, that I can look at my student's reactions and I can dynamically adapt to the student's needs, right? Also from the student's perspective, we feel that the student can ask questions to the teacher during the class itself. So this, these two seem to be the most benefit from the teacher A's style perspective. Okay. However, if we keep in mind, what is the drawback? So the key drawback is that the student does not have access to the teacher while working on problems at home. So student at that time when they are actually trying to apply their knowledge, they have to do it on their own and like we saw in the uh, one of the earlier sessions, we become experts only when we practice. We do not become experts by simply listening to somebody else however well that person may be explaining. right? And the second thing is that the teacher does not know what difficulties students face while doing the problem solving. So these are the two main drawbacks of teacher A, although teacher A has these two advantages. Now if you look at teacher B, uh, some of you have already responded saying that student will develop self-learning ability. Okay. So that is one good thing. So now if you look at it from the teacher's perspective, it turns out that in teacher B case, this teacher can address the student's problem solving difficulties in the class. So this being able to address it in the class is a big advantage because the teacher is available to the student at the time when the difficulty happens. Okay. So for the student, again the key thing is that the student can watch the lecture video at their own pace. So if they did not understand something, they can go back and watch it again and so on. And the second thing is they can get immediate help from peers and teachers during the problem solving process. The key drawback in this case is that the teacher has to put in more effort to create the video and the teacher has to put in more effort to create activities to be performed in class. Let us look a little more closely at what we want to do in this session. So in this session, what we will learn is what is a flipped classroom and what are its advantages and identify some active learning strategies to effectively integrate flipped classroom into your teaching. Okay. So there is a lab version which we will not be doing here, we will do that some other time. Okay. So what we want to see is that in a typical traditional classroom, largely what happens is what is called information transmission. Okay. So the instructor lectures and the student take notes. Sometimes the instructor asks questions and the students respond. Sometimes the students ask questions and the instructor responds. So these are the activities that predominantly take place in the class in the teacher A mode. Okay. And what happens outside the classroom is what is called assimilation of the knowledge. Okay. So the instructor gives problem sets and assignments which the students solve and submit 
and now students may work individually or in groups. So, I will give you a minute to think about what might be the disadvantage of this information transmission model. Okay. So, what we find is that for the traditional classroom model during class, now the instructor is lecturing, but students do not pay utmost attention. So, that is what is happening even now that I am often the one who is most excited about my subject. So, we are all as teachers we are excited about the subject and right now also I am lecturing assuming that everybody is paying a lot of attention to me. Now, that assumption need not be valid, I mean it is quite likely that it is invalid because many of you may be doing other things in your remote centers which I have really no way of controlling from here. So, however good the lecture may be the point is that students do not pay utmost attention. Okay. The second thing is that students assume that they understand something because they can follow the lecture. These are the two key things that happen during the lecturing or information transmission phase, okay, which are assumptions that we often assume otherwise. Okay. Then the second thing is when instructors are asking questions often what happens is that these questions are answered only by few who are the high achievers in your class and others might be left behind. And as a result of which you know, even when students are asking questions they are also asked only by a few and others may keep quiet. Okay. So, as a result of this what happens is the instructor may assume that all the students have understood when in fact many of the students have really not understood the concept or the topic that they are trying to explain. Now, if you look at what happens outside the classroom during the assimilation phase, so the instructor has given problem sets and assignments and we find that these assignments may be too challenging for some students or they may be too boring for other students. So, possibly this could be one reason why you know people simply submit somebody else's assignment as their own. The second thing that could happen is students will typically study just before the assignment submission deadline or the exam. So, often what happens is that the students have not got mastery over the content soon after the class, but they defer getting mastery over the content to just before the exam. So, as a result of which what happens is that they focus on the assessment aspect and not on the concept attainment aspect. So, they simply look at okay, what are the questions that this instructor gave in the last year and try to somehow using just the rote learning method try to get to a mechanism of scoring well in the exam. Okay. So, these are the main limitations of the traditional classroom model. When we say we want to flip the classroom, what does that mean? It means that in the traditional case information transmission is happening in the class and assimilation is happening outside the class. So, what we want to do is we want to flip this by saying that let the information transmission happen outside the class and let the assimilation happen inside the class. Okay, so, the key reason for doing that is that the information transmission is a lower cognitive level activity. So, it is simply that the student needs to hear and the student needs to be able to recall or the student needs to be able to explain. So, some lower cognitive level activities can be delegated to outside the classroom. So, students can be given a video, students there are many videos available and so, students can be told to watch some video for the information part of any concept. Okay. So, for example, suppose I am teaching about arrays what I can say is I can simply point to one of the many videos which talk about what is the structure of an array, what is the syntax of an array and so on and the important part of assimilation where they gain mastery over the content we can do in the class by doing problem solving exercises involving arrays. Okay. So, that is flipping the classroom going from information transmission in class and assimilation outside class to going to information transmission outside class and assimilation in class. Okay. So, this second activity we have already done it is the same poll that I had carried out earlier. 
and uh, since we have already had this session in the morning of active learning, I am very glad to see that most of you have opted for teacher B as the strategy which is more useful for student learning because the teacher B strategy is based on active learning. So, what is flipped classroom? See, a flipped classroom is one way to ensure that class time is spent in assimilation rather than in information transmission. So, in this case the instructor finds or creates videos on the topic, students watch the video before coming to the class and the class time is spent in activities and discussion. So, the class time is not spent in simply telling the students about some concept. The class time is spent in helping the student acquire mastery over that concept through problem solving, through exercises, through debates, through design, questions and so on. Okay, so, typically what is a flipped classroom video? A flipped classroom video is usually 10 to 20 minutes of lecture on one concept. The video may include slides, audio, annotation, writing on a tablet screen capture of an app. So, in this case in CS 101, it may be that screen capture of how a program executes in code blocks. All of these can be captured together to create a flipped classroom video. So, since we have already going to be doing some of these videos as part of the larger MOOC that will happen, I am not going to go to any example. So, we have lot of examples you can see on these sites. So, which are the various uh, flipped classroom videos. Okay. Now, what is the activity? So, the important thing to focus on from our active learning aspect is the activities that happen in the flipped classroom. Okay. So, what are these activities that take place? So, in one case, the content is given context. So, you give real world scenarios for your students to solve problems with. For example, if you have again, if you have talked about arrays, you give a problem in a real world context where they need to use arrays in order to solve it. So, as a result of this context, what happens is that students are actively engaged in problem solving and critical thinking beyond the traditional course. In the traditional course, they are sitting in the classroom at best absorbing information and getting up to the conceptual level. Whereas, here in this case, they are actively engaged with problem solving and critical thinking. Okay. So, students are encouraged to ask exploratory questions and delve beyond the core curriculum. So, even if the curriculum says that okay, the topic has to be taught in the next course. So, what happens is that students happen to get to such deeper topics because they have been engaging actively with the content. So, students as a result are transformed from passive listeners to active learners. Okay. All of today we have been talking about active learning. So, to recall one more time, what is active learning is that the instructor creates carefully designed activities that require the students to talk, write, reflect and express their thinking. So, you have already written activities for think, pair, share and peer instruction questions. Okay, and the students go beyond listening, copying of notes and execution of procedures. They actually engage with the content, they talk to their neighbor. So, the benefits that we saw were that students are actively engaged and learn from each other. It builds a friendly yet academic atmosphere and it includes all the students in the teaching learning process. So, what happens in a flipped classroom and active learning? So, the key point to note here is this that the classroom with the instructor and peers present is more useful for students to apply their learning rather than listening to information transmission and asking clarifications. Okay. So, when we are teaching in the traditional mode, what we are doing is we are doing information transmission, we are telling the students that okay, this is how a sorting algorithm works or this is how something else works and the students are simply asking for clarifications. Whereas, the point of a flipped classroom is that the classroom with the instructor and peers present is more useful for students to apply their learning, more useful for them to solve problems, more useful for them to do something, learning by doing as somebody had also said in the chat window, to do something with the 
content that they have already learned. So, in a flipped classroom, the in class time can be devoted to tasks that promote active learning. Since the information transmission happens before the class, so that is the key difference. Okay. So, the information transmission part is moved outside the class and the assimilation part is moved to inside the class. So, does a flipped classroom work? So, as we saw in the previous two or three sessions, there are many studies that establish the benefits of active learning strategies. Okay. So, flipped classrooms that incorporate active learning they also reap these benefits. Okay, so, there are two references that I have uh, put in here, which are specific to flipped classrooms. So, flipped classrooms with peer discussions and flipping the classroom with small group discussions such as think pair share, both of them have, there are experiments which show that they result in significant learning gains for the student. So, since we have been talking about active learning all throughout since the morning, and you are already familiar with earlier research that we talked about why what the gains of active learning are higher than those of traditional learning. So, the only point that you want to keep in mind is the flip classroom is not simply about creating the video. So, watch the video outside of the class and what you do in the class. So, even if we are saying that okay, there is a MOOC uh, on CS 101 which is going to be transmitted from some central place and the local instructor's job, you as the local instructor when you are in your class, your job is not to simply play the video, but your job is to come up with these activities which will help your students to reap the benefits of active learning. So, your job is to come up with peer instruction questions that you will use in your classroom based on the video that you are going to ask the students to watch as part of the MOOC. So, have a short summary at this point. Why is flipped classroom a good idea? Because the class time is spent in assimilation rather than information transmission. Also the class time is spent in higher cognitive levels. So, what do we mean by cognitive levels? By cognitive levels what we mean is that students apply their knowledge or they analyze a particular situation or they create some new knowledge okay? rather than simply the lower levels of recalling what they have learnt or trying to understand or being able to explain something which all of which can be done by rote learning. So, the important idea here is that the support of the peers and the instructor is available while working on the higher cognitive levels in a flipped classroom. So, that is the key difference that the support is available while they are working not simply while they are listening. Okay. So, let us do one activity here. So, the activity is that suppose your institute made it compulsory for you to use the flipped classroom mode. Okay. So, let us say for CS 101. So, you found an excellent video on your topic and asked your students to watch it before the class. Okay. So, the question is what will you do in the class most of the time? So, let us say for example, there are there is a site which uh, IIT Bombay has which is called the spoken tutorial dot org. That site has lot of flip classroom videos that can be used for flip classroom on C++ programming. Okay. So, the question is suppose we pick one topic, let us say we pick the topic of uh, arrays or a topic of recursions or whatever is your favorite topic. Okay. So, you pick that topic and you say that okay, the students have watched a video on that topic. Now, your question is what is it that <coughs> you will do in the class? Very specific to the topic of your choice. So, do not send me answers by the chat right now. Right now, we are only doing the think phase where people have to think individually. Okay, only after the discussion and all, we want to go to the share phase where you send me answers over chat. So, some of you are sending answers like saying you will ask a query in the classroom. So, that is exactly what I am saying. We need to be a little bit more specific that is in the category of I will do problem solving. Okay. So, you need to be a little more specific of what will you do, what will students do during the activity. Okay. So, many centers people seem to have finished writing the think phase. So, let us move on to the pair phase. So, at the pair phase, what you want to do is examine your neighbor's answer. So, here is the important thing where you will apply what you have learned since the morning. Okay. So, what you want to do is examine whether it helps the student 
to work on higher cognitive levels. Higher cognitive levels is apply, analyze rather than simply repeat or clarify. Okay. So, together make your answers more specific, so that your strategy develops the higher cognitive levels of your students. Okay. So, that they go beyond simply being able to explain what is an array. So, they should be able to create a program which involves arrays. Okay. So, what is the activity that you will do in order to facilitate that? So, you can have about 5 minutes for this discussion. So, many of you have started sending responses through AVU chat and a lot of them are valid responses. In for example, somebody is saying that I will give exercises in the class, go around the class and address the doubts, design problems related to the same topic for the students, conduct short quizzes. Point I want to make is for those who are still saying that I will take queries or answer clarification or explain it in a simpler manner. The point you have to keep in mind is that is really not a flipped classroom, that is simply just the instructor asking the student to watch a video and then repeating whatever the content of the video once again in the classroom. So, that is not a flipped classroom that does not achieve the purpose. The purpose is achieved only when students are doing active learning. And what we have seen since the morning, all the four sessions that we have talked about is that in active learning, students have to go beyond simply asking queries and clarifying their doubts. Many of you are saying solve tutorial problems. So, even for solve tutorial problems, what we want to be sure is that the students are solving the problems and not simply watching the instructor solve the problem. Lot of answers are of the type that I will give TPS activities or ask some question from the students, group discussions, suggestions like rapid fire questions. See, somebody is saying that I will take a real time example and then make it into small steps, identifying multiple solutions to a problem, okay, cross questioning between student groups. So, that is again a very good strategy that you can use that you can have one set of students create a question which the another set of students have to answer. So, it kind of becomes a competition for the students and they have great fun. So, when we implement such a strategy, we find that students engage very deeply with the content that they are not simply setting a difficult question for the other group, but they are also setting a conceptually deep question which helps their own learning also. Okay. So, I think we have seen enough choices so far. Uh, and many of the suggestions that are coming are specific. There are still a large number of broad suggestions which are coming. So, to those centers, I would suggest that you go a little more deeply into these examples, so that you can see what the what is meant by specific activities. Okay, so, here is an example. So, suppose we take uh, programming as a course and the array, topic of arrays. Okay. So, the pre class activity may be to watch a video that defines an array and shows C++ examples on use, use of arrays. Okay. So, it simply says that array is defined as int something something and here is an example what we saw in the previous session that we can show an example of how an array is initialized and how the array values are printed out. Okay. So, the in class activity that you can carry out now could be that one is you could give a worksheet which has programs using arrays, where the students have to predict the output of sum. Okay. So, instead of a worksheet, you could also create this into a peer instruction question as we saw in the previous session. You can have students find errors in other programs and you can have students insert missing code into the program. So, you can create small programs involving arrays as part of this worksheet and you can either have students to work on the worksheet in class and submit it at the end of the class or you can have students to work on it in the peer instruction model by displaying the questions and then having them discuss about it. Okay. The other thing that you can do is you can carry out a think pair share activity to write a program to sort an array. Okay. So, this is one example of what can be done in a flipped classroom. Another example from a different course that I teach which is communication networks. So, here again what we can do is suppose the topic is IP addressing. So, 
IP addressing traditionally is a topic in which there is a lot of telling where we have to say that okay, what is a class A address, what is a class B address and so on. So, in this case again you can delegate that entire information transmission to the pre class activity of watching the video. So, the students watch a video that describes the basic mechanism for assigning IP addresses in a network and in the class they can do peer instruction questions on IP address classes. So, you can show an IP address and ask them to vote on whether it is class A or class B or class C or you can ask them to construct an IP address of a certain class. Okay. The second thing that you could do is you could also have a debate like what we had in the beginning of this session. You could have a debate on the pros and cons of hierarchical addressing and another activity that you could do is you can have think pair share activities to design solutions to reduce inefficient use of address space. So, there are many such activities that can be done in your class which is beyond simply clarifying the doubts that the students have got as a result of watching the video. Okay. So, as instructors what we feel is this clarification of doubts is the most important thing okay. and after watching a video certainly students are going to have some doubts which need clarification. But what we want to do here is to go beyond simply doubt clarification, but generate some activities which will help the students to go deeper into the content. Okay. So, here is an important point that we have to be alert about a flipped classroom is not an instructor simply creating lecture videos, it is also not students simply watching these lecture videos. And finally, it is not the instructor simply giving clarifications in the class. Okay. All this has to happen, but it is effective only if in addition to all of this, the instructor creates structured learning activities to be carried out in class for students to apply what they learned from the videos. So, that is when the flipped classroom becomes really effective. So, the key elements in a flipped classroom are first is you want to give students an opportunity to gain first exposure to the topic before the class. Okay. Now, the obvious question is why will students watch the video? Okay. Where is the incentive for them to watch the video? If they are not used to watching videos, if they are not used to doing homeworks, why should they do this before they come to class? And what happens if they come to class without having watched the videos? So, what we can what we need to do here is we want to provide incentives for students to prepare for class. Okay. So, one way of incentivizing them is to say that look only if you watch the video will you get any benefit out of coming to the class. Okay. And after a couple of such sessions they realize that in order to apply their knowledge they need to watch the video first. So, if a positive incentive does not work we can always use an incentive of conducting a very short quiz at the beginning of every class. You know. So, for many of us who need to also take attendance this quiz can also serve the purpose of attendance. The quiz can simply be some very simple question on the topic that was asked. For example, you may simply ask them that okay, which ensures that they have watched the video. Okay. So, you may simply ask them let us say what is the syntax of a declaration or a if then else or whatever construct that you have, you are going to deal with in that particular class. So, asking a simple question provides an incentive for students to prepare for the class and this can also serve the purpose for those of us who need to you know take attendance because of whatever reasons it, it can also serve that purpose. And in order that the students are not under pressure thinking that every class there is going to be a quiz you can say that the best k out of n quizzes is going to be considered for the exam. Okay. So, that is one way of providing incentives for students to prepare for the class. The third thing that you want to do is facilitate higher level cognitive activities. So, once again we are emphasizing on this higher level activities, higher level activities means you do something with the knowledge that you have gained. Instead of simply saying that okay, I know what is an array, I know how to define an array you start writing programs which involve arrays and you start designing programs which require that particular data structure for their solution. And finally, the fourth thing in a flipped classroom is to provide mechanisms 
for students to get feedback from peers and instructors. So, two mechanisms we have already seen, one is the peer instruction mechanism where students talk to each other and the other is the think pair share mechanism where once again students talk to each other in pairs and then talk to each other as a group in the entire class. Okay, one way of them getting feedback from the instructor is in the is during the share phase of think pair share or when the instructor is going around the classroom while the students are carrying out their activities. So, these are the four key steps involved in a flip classroom and not simply creating and watching of the videos. So, what are some effective in class activities? This is exactly what we have been talking about since the morning. Okay, so, peer instruction questions are one set of in class activities. They are used for ensuring conceptual understanding and addressing common misconceptions. Think pair share is another set of effective in class activities, which can be used for application of concepts and tackling of design problems. Okay, group problem solving is a third type of activity, which we have not really talked about how to implement, but informally it essentially means giving a problem to students and letting them work in teams and then slowly reducing the size of that team, so that all the students get competent with that particular uh, content. So, these are some effective in class activities that you can use in order to ensure that not only your own classroom is effective, but also when you have to run a flip classroom using somebody else's videos, you can do it effectively. Here are some references where if you need to find out more about what is flip classroom, how to set up flip classrooms and so on. So, here are some references that you can use. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so, we are live again and uh, from our side it appears that uh, this playing it uh, with a video with somebody simply operating the video was also successful because I was monitoring the chat responses that uh, you were writing and they were pretty much uh, similar to what chat responses we got from the previous round of offering this. So, um, I think what you could do is if you want to run such a session in your own college for your colleagues. So, you could simply take this video now and pause it at the points where we paused, carry out the activities and proceed and uh, the chances are that the your colleagues will also be able to benefit from the video itself. So, the video will be uploaded uh, uh, shortly. right? Okay, so, now what I will do for the remaining uh, rest of the session is to take some uh, questions live that you may have. So, you can either send questions through the chat window or uh, we can simply you can simply do a hand raise on a view and uh, we can transfer the floor to you. Uh, sir, uh, I have uh, three question. See, uh, you have given this flip, uh, flip classroom as well as pair share. Uh, my question is, we have strict uh, rules in the in our college like you have to do uh, the class particularly and uh, like using this particular thing will be monitored by our higher ups or peers. So, how do we really convince that what we are doing is right or? Okay, so let me answer that question. So, it is a very uh, fair and important question which all of us need to uh, understand the point. So, the thing is that the in the beginning there will be some resistance from higher authorities, okay, because they are not used to the model. So, what is required is two things, one is to educate, to tell them that this is the new 21st century way of teaching. Okay. In, in the 20th century what was important was the teacher should have the information, you know, because books were not so widely available, journals were not easily accessible. So, those who had the information they were at premium and so they were sharing the information. So, transmission of the information was very valuable in the 20th century. Now, in the 21st century the information is easily available to everybody. So, what is important as a teacher is we have to move from this just giving the information to ensuring that the student has understood and is able to apply that information. So, that is the central activity that needs to happen in our classes. So, this is some education that we have to do to our higher authorities that is one thing. Second thing is we have to convince more colleagues to also participate in such an activity. 
and the way of doing this is once you do it in your own classroom it is your students who will go ahead and become uh, messengers of this way of teaching. So, this is what happened in my class. So, when I started doing think pair share, so students wrote in my course evaluation that this is a great idea more and more professors should start using it. So, therefore, then the management looks at it and says look what is this idea that you are trying and then give a workshop to other instructors and now many people are using the techno the, that strategy in uh, our institute. So, that is the way in which you can tackle this. Sir, our question is how this flipped classroom technique can help weaker or inactive students to improve their performance. Okay. So, this is again another good question how can it help weaker or inactive students to improve their technique. See the thing is that when we are doing activities in the flipped classroom the main advantage that the weaker or inactive students get is the support of their peers and the availability of the teaching assistant or of the instructor. So, as an instructor when you are going around while these uh, while students are working uh, on let us say you have given them a worksheet. So, your flipped classroom for this particular topic you have created a worksheet based on the video and you have asked them to do that worksheet. So, as you are going around so you can see what are what the weaker students are doing and you can give individual attention to them for that particular topic. So, they can also then you can also do a think pair share where the weaker student can learn from their neighbor. So, all of this can happen in a uh, instructor facilitated environment. So, that is the advantage. Is it worthwhile trying out the TPS or flip club uh, classroom activities for only relevant topics or complex topics in the syllabus or beneficial only if the entire syllabus is uh, covered through this uh, pedagogy tools? Okay, so, one more this is again a good question. So, the point here is that if you do it rarely in your uh, course it will not have much effect because the students would not be uh, familiar with the technique. Okay. On the other hand you do not want to do it too often also. So, typically what I do is I spend about 10 to 20 minutes in a class. So, uh, my class is one and a half hours. So, I spend about 20 minutes in every class doing some such activity. So, that also it uh, ensures that students are engaged as well as it ensures that uh, you know they continue to be familiar with the technique. So, even if you can spend only 10 minutes it is advisable to do this 10 minutes in let us say every class or every alternate class. So, that the students are in touch with what you expect them to do in that technique. So, it you should not keep it only for complex topics you can do it for simple topics also like what we saw in the uh, video about the question of arrays. So, it is a very simple topic which we could have just explained, but even for such a topic it is possible to do it and the more you get students to talk to each other and learn from each other the easier becomes your job. Okay. Bansal institute of engineering. Uh, I am from Bansal IIT Lucknow my question is that no doubt flip class is better than the traditional class, but in private engineering college the student staff is very very poor here main activity is here how to pass maximum number of student in semester exam here uh, very much important to re require to more and more practice in writing how to implement the flip class in our uh, in our institution. Okay, so, this is again a good question, but I do not have a good answer for it. So, if students are not interested I think all that you can do is you can you know you have to somehow connect with the students and motivate them. So, you have to basically sell them the idea that look what I am teaching you is going to be useful to you later on in life. Okay. So, uh, if basically what we are teaching them are thinking skills you know again content is no longer a very important thing to teach for these 21st century students you know, because they can always look up the content. So, what we have to teach them are processes we have to teach them ways of thinking so that they can continue to learn. So, if you are able to sell this idea to your students that if you come to my class you will learn something beyond just the topic then they will come to your class. So, if you say that look coming to my class and doing these activities will help you tomorrow when you go to that uh, financial services company which is what your aim is and your activity is also set up in that manner then you will find that they will start participating they will start taking it as exercises. But uh, other than connecting with the students there really is no solution to this question. 
Mukesh Patel. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, I wanted to ask you one question. Suppose in a flip flip classroom, we ask the students uh, to watch the video at their convenience and ask every student to post at least one question. On an average, uh, suppose there are 50 students in the class, and uh, on uh, like we get at least 50 questions. Prepare them uh, before coming to a classroom. Come to a classroom and discuss those 50 questions, uh, whatever the students had posted as their doubt with respect to a topic. Do you think this would achieve the objective of a flipped classroom and coming to the class and engaging them for an hour? And uh, do you think we are going to achieve that higher cognitive levels that we are trying to uh, goal for the flipped classroom? Yes. So the short answer is yes. This is a good idea. Uh, the long answer is that this will require you to do a lot of work because you have to also now see their questions beforehand, and you also need to make sure that all their questions are not just clarification questions. See, the point is, if you are only going to address questions that arise from them, which they have posted, the chances are that many of those questions will be clarification questions. In which case, the chances are that you will spend time re-explaining mat material which was already there in the video. so if you ensure that you pay attention to those questions which are of the higher cognitive level and if the students have not asked those questions you you create activities or you post such questions yourself then this is an excellent idea that you are suggesting is there any open source softwares are available for video and interface for pre preparing vi video and interfaces okay so uh, there are lot of open source software so if you go to this website spoken tutorial.org okay so this is one of the project which is being carried out at iit bombay so if you go to that website you will find uh, videos on how to create videos you will find instruction material you will find lots of such material that you can use to create your own flip classroom videos community group so we have uh, so many teaching methods like active learning content learning and tps flipped classroom some students like active learning and some students like content learning and some students like tps so if one faculty how to handle this uh, all those techniques in the same classroom okay so again here it's not necessary to use all these techniques see all of these techniques broadly come under active learning so tps is one way of doing active learning there is no separate thing called active learning okay flip classroom is again a way of doing active learning so what is active learning active learning is making sure that your students are engaged with the content in your classroom okay so what you could do is simply use those few techniques which are first of all appropriate for your topic and second of all you are comfortable with okay so i use basically three or four such techniques like in this particular one we have seen uh, polling which is the peer instruction method or or what are also called as clicker questions method then uh, debate is one method that you can use think pair share is one method that you can use and by and large many of the uh, instructional goals that we have can be satisfied by these methods so for example if you want to ensure that your students have understood a particular concept properly then use a peer instruction give a multiple choice question make them talk to each other if you want them to be able to evaluate pros and cons of some two ideas then do a debate if you want them to design a new solution for something then do a think pair share so two or three such techniques if you use it is sufficient it is not necessary that we need to use all the active learning techniques that are there in the world so and also it would be hard to suddenly jump into trying to use all of them at the same time so what i would recommend is start small start doing one small activity in every class even if you are just simply going to pose a multiple choice question and ask them to discuss with each other about the answer at least you have made a beginning and then once they have got used to that then you introduce another idea like think pair share make them talk for a little more time and so on so that is the way in which you can uh, use these active learning techniques effectively Sri Datta Institute. Sir, uh, how many hours we can go for think, pair, and share per semester? As we are having limited time and uh, we are having pressure to complete the syllabus. Okay, so the point here is that if you do think, pair, share, your syllabus will automatically get completed. So this is a very common uh, concern of instructors before they start using the technique. once you start using the technique you will find that many of the things that you were planning to explain or to tell the students have already discovered for themselves through the think pair share activity okay so syllabus completion is 
not a concern. I mean, right now, since you have not executed it in your own courses, you just have to take my word for it. Okay, the how much time should be spent on it again depends upon the activity. It's like, do not spend more than 20 minutes, and less than 10 minutes is also not very useful for a think pair share activity. And ideally, you should do it in every class, one in every class, not more than two in every class, and definitely one in every alternate class. Okay, so then it is effective, and you will find that you can complete the syllabus. Yeah, KJ Somaya. Uh, good morning, sir. So, through Flip Classroom introduction, uh, are we saying that it is indirectly promoting self-learning among students? Okay, so now this is a loaded question because we are not simply saying self-learning. I mean, it can be used for self-learning because the student can uh, revisit the video all the time. But it does not mean so. Flip Classroom does not mean that we simply post videos, tell them ki you know you look at it and then come directly for the exam and we don't do any work. So the Flip classroom is not a mechanism to move away from the instructor and into pure self learning. It is useful for self learning, it is useful for recap and so on. Okay, but the activities that you do in the classroom after the students have watched the video, those are the important ones. Now, whether in, in those activities you are very much present, you, are, you need to be very agile, you need to go amongst all the groups that are working. You need to see what answers they are coming up. You need to give feedback. Individual feedback has to be given to the instruct uh, to the students. So when this happens, then it becomes a really effective technique. Sri Ram Krishna. Uh, this is uh, good morning, sir. This is Shibu from uh, Ramakrishna Institute of Technology, RC One Two Four Nine. Uh, I have a question. Uh, we have courses in our program which has uh, tutorial components. Uh, Maybe 15 hours of total uh, components are there. Uh, if this think pair share activity can be recorded as a part of tutorial activities for a subject or for a course? Yes, it can be done that. But again, it is useful if you have planned the activity properly and you include it as uh, at the appropriate points in your course. You, it does not make sense if you, if you say that I am going to do a lecture in the morning and the tutoring activities will happen in the afternoon in a lab. So, it should be integrated. So, if you are uh, hours are integrated properly, it can work well. Chameli Devi, please go on. Sir, my question is, how do we incorporate this uh, think pair share activity into the into the present education scenario? But the, uh, in the present uh, education scenario, uh, we have to follow certain time limits, and uh, within that time span, we have to complete the um, syllabus also. So, so I, if we follow this uh, think pair share activity, so what what are the ways through which we can really implement uh, in the present education scenario. So, I have Can just answered this question by another center. The, so, th there really is nothing for me to add other than saying that you have to first try it out. Try it out first in one topic, two topics. Once you get the confidence, you will find that you will be able to complete the syllabus. IES College. Uh, I am Shraddha Pandit from IES College of Technology, Bhopal. Sir, we have two questions related to flipped classroom. Uh, first one is, uh, what will we do with correct, incorrect, partially correct responses, even silly responses in flip classroom, because sir, we have to maintain an emotionally safe environment. And our second question is, uh, can we flip complete class or just do selected lessons? Over to you sir. Okay, let me answer the second question first. So, it is not necessary that you need to flip every class. So, it is it's sufficient if you do flip classroom activities for some of your classes. So, it basically for topics where you are going to be largely doing an information transmission lecture, it is useful to do the flip classroom so that they view the lecture outside and come and do some uh, active learning uh, activities in the class. Coming to the first question of how to handle responses, especially silly responses or you know, off task responses, that again you have to have a good rapport with the students. Okay. So, the first time when such responses come, you have to use the help of other students who are serious to suppress these responses. So, my usual tactic is to ignore some of these responses. Once in a while I say that look, this is all, it may seem funny to you, but it is not really going to help you in any way. So, after maybe one class or at most two classes of such activities, you find that even the ones who, even those students who come with an intention to disrupt the class, they either they do not participate or they also get involved in the correct manner. So, 
this all depends upon how well you are able to build a rapport with your students and the one thing that is required for that is for the students to have a belief that you really want something good to happen for them and you are there so that they learn. So, the moment they get that feeling from your part they start cooperating this is my experience. For teaching to students whether PPT or NPTEL video or blackboard teaching is, will be useful. So, this is too broad a question. So, it depends upon the topic. Okay. So, if you have videos that you can use then you should go ahead and use them. So, the more you, you use resources open resources that are created by others and focus on actually seeing whether your uh, students are able to apply that knowledge the better it will be for you. Huawei Engineering College. Actually you are talking about the flipping the classroom. In practically if you see uh, we are in a village or a moderate town. So, here the most of the students are um, very poor background uh, knowledge wise. Basically 40 percent students can involve in this kind of uh, flipping activities. Remaining 60 students will be uh, not so active. So, how we can um, give this flipping the class activity to and produce some good results in the future also. Okay. So, what you can do is so if mo most of the students do not have access to uh, seeing the videos before coming to class. So, what we can do is you know you can create short videos I mean you do not need them to see a one hour video you, know, you create short videos or find good short videos that are there and simply play those videos in the beginning of the class in the class itself. So, the price that you pay here is now that instead of them having done that activity and then coming to class you are spending some of your class time on doing that activity. So, it may happen that you know you have to extend the class time by those 10 15 minutes, but that is one way in which you can do you can say that the we will start the class 15 minutes early. So, those of you who have not been able to watch the video come here and watch that video and then start the class. So, that is one mechanism that you can use. The other mechanism that you can use is that you know you go ahead with doing the normal teaching. So, instead of simply doing lecturing even if you modify your teaching to saying that okay, I will do 10 minutes of lecturing, then I will do one activity, then again I will do 10 minutes of lecturing, then again I will do one activity and that is the way in which your class proceeds. That also will be effective even if you are unable to play any videos at all. Okay. Okay. D Y Patel. Hello. Hello sir. Yeah, so what uh, I sir, I want to ask just uh, we cannot monitor the student whether they are learning or not. Sometimes they may lie and in the next uh, we cannot test all the students at a time. Uh, so, 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 that is okay. So, what you can you can do is like see it is a lot of it it is not possible for the teacher to do all the work and the student to not do any of the work. So, you have to get across to them that look this is something that needs to be done and if they do not do it then they will not be able to participate in the discussion and then uh, you know it is it is their performance in the final exam or whatever is going to get impacted. So, there really is no other way of doing it. So, my question is that what kind of activities we can give in a classroom of a programming language. So, uh, what we have done as part of the CS 101 and the computer networking programs is that you would have uploaded a lot of these think pair share activities. Okay, so, that was the assignment which was given yesterday. So, what we will be doing is we will have the TAs go through the uh, assignments and identify activities which are of uh, broad applicability which everybody can use and this we will post, uh, post as a resource area for both programming as well as computer networking. So, there I do not know how long this will take maybe in a month or so these uh, activities that can be used by everybody will be posted in a common resource area. Hello, good morning, sir. According to experts studying teaching pedagogy, the blackboard utilization is more effective than using PPT slides and videos. But flip classroom scenario is focus more on PPT videos. And then, how introspect these scenarios? So this again is uh, you know over generalized statement. So it depends upon the topic. It depends upon the learning objective. So some objectives, it is uh, desirable to work the 
problem out live maybe on the blackboard or whatever material that you are using. For other objectives it is valid to look at this uh, uh, create a flip classroom video or find a flip classroom video and use. So, by and large today almost nobody believes that only blackboard teaching is better than all of these things. Terna Engineering College. Uh, sir, I want to ask one question about the TPS activity, whether for the theoretical subjects, how it will be more effective or how it will be effective for the theoretical subject which we are going to teach in the sub some of the final sessions or final years. It is TPS actually is useful for almost all the subjects, you will just have to be a little creative in designing the topic. So, by theoretical subject I assume that you mean you know either automata theory or uh, you know maybe. Uh, uh, algorithms and complexity you know topics of that nature. So, uh, even in those topics you can create TPS activities essentially suppose for example, you want to teach a proof. Okay. So, you can do the think phase of saying that okay, think of what the main steps in the proof will be and in the pair phase the students together work out the details of the proof okay. and in the share phase they compare their proof with the proof that uh, you have. Uh, created and see you know where their uh, ideas are lacking or uh, see what are other ways of doing the same proof. So, even for theory subjects it is possible to create these activities and uh, what is important is for us to exercise creativity and try to design these activities start with a small uh, idea start with a small topic it is not necessary that on day one or the first time you are using these activities all your topics you need to be able to do that start try it out in a couple of topics get confidence yourself that yes this is helping me and also get confidence that I am able to design these activities well and as you progress you will find that your uh, skill in designing and executing these activities keeps on improving. Techno India. Okay sir uh, 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 this is a very simple question from our side we are finding that students these days are not much interested in studies. Uh, if you, even if we go for flipped classroom, we find that uh, making them interested in uh, the classroom is very difficult. Okay. Can you so, find again this is a question that I already answered just from a previous center. So, the key points let me say resummarize the key points one is that you have to somehow build a rapport with the students and second is that you will be able to do that if you can convince them that what they are going to get out of coming to your class will be useful to them in their later activities that they do. So, for example, you have to say that look this problem solving that you are going to do in class will also be useful for you if irrespective of which job you get into. So, then you will be able to get them to come to class. Okay. MES. So, my question is. Uh which is better if we take uh, the entire subject in flipped classroom with partial interest from students or taking some modules uh, from with full interest of the students. Whichever works for you, you do. Okay, there is no broad answer to this question. You try it out and as you keep doing more of these act activities or flipped classrooms, as your confidence increases, you do whichever works for you. Uh, it is 11 o'clock and I suppose most people have to break for tea. And there are I think a large number of centers still with their hand raised. So, it is really not going to be able to possible for me to take all these centers. So, let me stop here.